Hey, it's Florian, online tennis instruction. In today's video, I want to show you a case study of a student of mine who is a professional player. Lena here managed to add 5 miles per hour to her forehand on average while reducing errors by over 50%. She also increased the average amount of topspin on her forehand shots by over 60%. She achieved all of this by implementing the same concepts and using the same drills that I teach in the Total Forehand Domination program. What I specifically want to show you with this video and the next two videos is the process that you have to go through if you want to improve your forehand and make a major technical change. This process is the same whether you are a 3-5 player, a 4-0, 4-5 player or a professional player and without this process you won't be able to make a big technical improvement. We'll also take a close look at how to get rid of a big backswing which is exactly the problem that Lena had and which is one of the most common problems I see at the club level. Lena tried to generate too much power with what we call independent arm action instead of using the arm and the body efficiently together. Last but not least, I'll also give you a glimpse into the future of tennis instruction where we will be able to objectively measure improvements like increases in average forehand speed, for example. But let's take a closer look at some footage here from a set she played before we made any technical changes to her forehand and before we applied the principles and drills from the total forehand domination program. As you can see right now, she had a huge backswing and that resulted in a lot of errors on that forehand side and she also did not manage to generate enough power. So we recorded this before match on a PlaySight smart court with eight cameras. That gives us all the data on her average forehand speed, how many errors she made and also how much topspin she hit on average. So let's take a look at that. In this set, Lena's average forehand speed was 62 miles per hour, which is not quite high enough to compete with the best players in the world. Even more importantly though, Lena made only 67% of her forehand shots, so 23% of her forehands were not in the court and that's way too many errors. Last but not least, the average amount of topspin on her forehand was 845 revolutions per minute, which is also not enough to compete with the best players in the world. Okay, so now we've seen the data and we know that her forehand was technically not good enough to compete at the level that she wants to compete at. So step one now is to identify the technical problem. We need to find out where her forehand technique is inefficient and what it should look like instead. I already touched on this earlier, but now let's look at it in more detail. There were two technical problems here on Lena's forehand that we addressed. Number one, Lena's backswing is too big. Her hand and racket move too far behind her back, and I also often call this too much independent arm action. Essentially, players that have too big of a backswing and too much independent arm action try to generate power too much with the arm, and then the arm and the body are out of sync, and in Another thing that often happens in this case is that the contact point is late. You can see that right here for Lena. The contact point should be in front of the front hip and she often struggled with contacting the ball late which leads to a loss of control and a lot of errors. The second technical problem here has to do with the position of her wrist here at the end of the backswing. If we look at this, we see that the tip of the racket now points to Lena's left side, and that is a major problem. She puts her wrist in a position that does not allow her to maximize racket head speed. The position of the wrist here is a complex topic on the forehand and I cover that in much more detail in my forehand programs. What I can tell you here is that you definitely do not want to be in this position with the tip of the racket pointing to the left side which is unfortunately very common. You can have the tip of the racket in a more neutral position where it points approximately to the back fence and up and that's a position that we see with a lot of female professional players like Victoria Azarenka for example. Or even more advanced, you can have the tip of the racket point a little bit to the right side in this position. That's a position that most male professional players get into and that's also the position that maximizes racket head speed and that I'll teach Lena here. So let's take a look at these two critical aspects we want to change here from the back view so that we can see the difference of what it should look like. 
we can see that the hitting hand and the racket don't go too far behind my back to my left side as we saw for Elena. At the same time we also see that the tip of the racket points slightly to the outside. This allows me to use the muscles in my arm more effectively to generate maximum racket head speed. Okay, so that's it for step one, identifying the technical problem. In the next video I'll show you how we fixed Lena's forehand technique with the same step-by-step -step progressions that I teach you in my Total Forehand Domination video program. For now I would recommend that you take a look at your forehand swing and make sure that your backswing is not too big. A short compact motion is definitely a fundamental aspect of a great forehand.